Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to take a look on a couple of modern controls into Power Apps. So one of the control is modern tabular control and the other is modern toolbar. So over here you can see this table control is modern responsive control which can show the data from any of the data source. It can be SharePoint, Dataverse, table and it can show that data into tabular format as well as list one so that property we are going to see in a while and it also shows the number of uh, rows from this data source and if I click on any of the cell if I run it and click on any of the cell it will open that item into edit mode we can just update the item and save it and as well as it shows this number of rows selected into the footer and we can very well connect that to our this top toolbar so we can select these items and click on delete. It will remove the items from our data source. In our case, it's SharePoint. It will delete those rows. And click on refresh for to refresh the data from the actual data source. So this we are going to take a look in detail. And I'll just open my Power App Studio. And we'll start creating one app from scratch. So now we can add, we can go to our settings. First of all, to enable this new controls so just go to new or you can just search as well this modern controls and theme just enable it so that you can use this new modern table as well as toolbar control so once you do that just click ok and you can start you can find your table control uh, into from this insert list so you can just click on this table so it's still in preview and we can just add our data source to it so for, for adding data source just click on this items and over here just search for your data source which you want to connect so in my case it's SharePoint list and this is the finance list which we are going to connect so I'll just say existing connection to my one of the site and I'll just pick my this financial sample list and it will connect uh, table to that data source so by default it added many of the items so you can just choose whatever columns you wish to add because my list has like number of items or number of uh, columns as well so you can just click on these fields which the fields which you want to keep or the fields which you want to remove so I'll just remove a couple of them so that we have a better space so over here I will also include one of the date fields so that we can show into date column as well so I'll just pick this date add it and once this date is added I'll just increase my width of my table you would see that I have this table column and this formatting you can decide from your this properties panel short date or short date time so you can just change that to short date if you wish to just show the dates and at the bottom in the footer you can see like by default is enabled but we can control that footer displaying so before that we'll just look at this reflow behavior so reflow behavior is based on your screen size it will adjust into the tabular view or this list view so by default you can also restrict it to like show all the time in grid view or show all the time in list only view so in the in the mobile view it will show like this it will pick the three columns and as well as keep the avatar for your if it's a people picker column then it can keep your images person images or like with the title it will just create a new avatar based on the title provided so that's how it can keep it if I just uh, again check that to reflow and just run it up for once then in mobile view if I just change that to mobile view it will show into the list view so again going to the properties we can scroll down you can check like uh, enable sorting you can enable or disable the sorting you can allow the range selection so once we select this one yes then it will add the checkboxes to the multi select checkboxes and you can select the range of all these rows and once you select it will by default add that into the table dot selected item so whatever your table name is and it will add that to the your table dot selected items collection and we can also define the header font or header size theme color header font and color palette your this table should have so once you change this color palette the defined one so on the selection in the hover 
it will just display or take that the theme whatever you provided as an in place and in the advanced properties you would see like we have this on select so what action should happen on selection of the row so we'll be doing this like because we want to open the form so on that selection we would be opening the form or enable disable the edit we'll connect that toolbar so that it can allow deleting or addition or updates of our rows enable multiple selection these are these we have already done and we have the show avatar so that i have showed like in the list view it will show the avatars for your default the primary column show column headers and all these properties so now we'll just drag we'll use another control that is toolbar control so this is again into preview so this one also you can connect with your data source to get the items so this item is nothing but this json so if i forward this one so if you want to read this json from any of your existing list like where you want to keep it for configuration purpose then you can read it otherwise if you want to hard code then you can hard code this one for example this item display name you can change that to add and you can decide like this icon should be disabled or visible based on this property so if i just click on these properties we have this item disabled property and the appearance of this item and with the appearance you can uh, define your item icon as well like which icon should be displayed so for example for edit and delete we just want to show if something is selected into our this main table so that way you can say item disabled property and this disabled property should only be enabled once we have some count or row count into our data source which is our table one dot selected items so if count is greater than zero then it should don't disable it if it says then just disable it so that's how the same thing you can keep it for the delete one so like we'll just copy and in the delete you can define this one and just remove this existing property which is item disabled because it's duplicated and once it's there then only it will only be enabled that if we are doing a multi selection on our this form so i'll just name this app and now we'll just adjust the location of our toolbar so that it should look better and we can just run it and we'll just do a couple of selections and our delete button is enabled and this display is because we have just set a limited width to it so that's why it's coming in this context menu so you can increase the width of your this control so that it can show into the entire toolbar so you can just make it full and now as i said like on selection of these items we can just do uh we can just find those items from our table dot selected items and can do any operation so for example for delete if i just go to our uh, this delete on select so we have this on select on our toolbar as well so there we are having some switch statements so i'll just format this you would see we have this switch statement where like if delete button is clicked then notify delete so it's a test data it's just a notification so you can what you can do we can remove your this collection from your ex, actual data source the share point and you can just pick the table dot this selected items so it will directly be deleted from your data source so we did that for delete and in case you want to show the form then for that you have to have the form control in place and in my this demo as you have seen like i am creating one form with a overlay effect so the background screen would get a bit dimmed and my this pop up would take the precedence so that it can be shown as a model box for my doing any operation so the same way you can just drag and drop one form control to your screen or before that you can just for overlay effect you can just drag one container and this container just cover this entire screen with that container so that we can just provide a dimmed effect to this screen 
and just go to this background color of this container so first of all fill this a light gray and just move this container back reorder it send it to back and this container would only be visible when uh, we are selecting or when we are just updating some variable that this form should open and just go to the advance and then just set this opaque property or the transparency property to 0 0.5 so that it should be partially available it should be partially seen and the visible property of my this container should be driven from one of the variables so right now i'll just use that variable i'll just set first of all so i'll set that variable on my selection of this table so i'll just select this table on select i will set this is form mode so that will give me that my form should be opened up so i'll just say on select my form should be opened so this form mode i will use for my container visibility property so it's form mode and i will the same variable i will use for my form once i insert my form so now we are going to insert our form and this form again this modern form we are going to use so once you insert the form it will ask to connect to the data source you can connect to the same list or the same uh, table from dataverse or sharepoint whatever data source you are using and define these fields into your form so right now it's 10 fields are selected automatically and we need to as we added this form to our container so i'll just drag this form to the center and visible property we are going to again set that to our variable which is form mode so once it's selected then only it will be visible so let's just run it for once and we'll just do refresh or do this selection so it's overlaying but our form is not visible because we have to set our form default property display mode as new instead of this edit so i'll just select as new and let's again run it and we need to clear first of all so i'll just add one this refresh button go to our table or our toolbar and this toolbar will just as soon as we hit this instead of info we'll just say refresh as soon as we hit this info we are going to refresh our data source so i'll just go to on selection we want to refresh our data source financial sample and as well as we want to just clear our form mode so now i am going to again run it and this time we are just clicking on this refresh okay so we haven't changed this item data key so it will not be recognizing my info button still is showing info so we'll just go to our toolbar again and quickly change this items item key to refresh instead of info so i'll just quickly change and to display name refresh and icon you can just keep this one or just do a refresh icon and again run it so this time it fetched and it also cleared uh, this earlier variable so now once I click on this item, it's showing me this form but that form is not appearing up because of the style. So we'll just now work on our form style. Just select the form and we'll just give it a design. So first of all column I will just display as one column and we'll just set this layout as vertical layout in this fashion and we'll be giving a color to our form so that it should be visible so right now i'll just give something better so that it should be visible properly and over here we'll be just giving one this cross button or cross icon to close the form so inside the form itself in the first container itself i'll just add one icon cancel icon yeah and on this cancel we'll be just closing this 
pop up again so and for that we'll be just setting our variable is form mode to false as soon as it's done so now we run it and once we close this one we get our this table toolbar connected on selection of row again opening up this so this one we can define we can give a border so that this form can look better and could be visible more and this overlay is the transparency is too much so we will just reduce the transparency of our old overlay so that it can be a bit smoother so i'll just say 0.3 quite better than previous one and we can just give a border to our form or we can just drive that border using our containers as well if you want to give a radius round radius to it or you can just select your form go to display set the border as one and with dark blue is fine so we can do that and we have a scroll bar over there so if you need to increase the size of your form or adjust it then we can very well adjust it so the main crux is how we can use the modern design this tabular data easily with our new modern control but remember these both are still in preview so these are still evolving so for example if one of the thing which i observed is when i just do this segment we have this sorting but filter is not enabled so still i believe like it must be under construction that once the filters are there then we would able to filter the data as well and this of course you can beautify with other effects based on your power apps theme but the main topic was like how we can quickly use this toolbar and the modern table control so i hope like you may find it useful as well and if you have any question please do drop your comments i'll try to answer that is it for today's video thank you